Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and bring down to bite sized pieces. So, today, instead of time of the news, I want to talk to you about uh, one of the craziest, most ambitious projects that I've ever seen to date. And what this project actually does, it allows us to, to really just to dream about what could be possible. And this project is called Satoshi Island. And basically, what it is is exactly what you see here. They have uh, bought an island in the South Pacific, right outside of, uh, of Australia. And they are building the infrastructure to have blockchain and crypto enthusiasts move there. And uh, instead of just talking about it, I'm just going to play this video. It's about uh, two minutes long or so, two and a half minutes long. And it's going to explain to you exactly what it is. And then we'll, we'll dig into the nitty gritty. But before we get going, just so you know, all the land plots are pretty much sold out. And this is not something that I will personally be investing into or doing much of anything with. I just think it's a fascinating project about it, essentially what could be. So just watch this. Welcome to Satoshi Island, an 800 acre private island in development to become a sustainable smart city, created to be the first real world crypto economy running exclusively on cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. The island seen here is located in the tropical paradise of Vanuatu in the South Pacific and is owned and operated by Satoshi Island Limited. Accessible by direct flight from Australia, Asia, and the west coast of the US and Canada, Satoshi Island will become the official home for cryptocurrency professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. A place to visit, work, and live in the first true society built around an entirely decentralized financial system and blockchain-based democracy. The first stage of development is already completed, and those arriving will be greeted by traditional style villas, which act as a check-in area and relaxation center where visitors can unwind before exploring the entirety of the island. The remainder of the island is being developed with a different style of architecture through the introduction of ultra-modern smart homes and offices. The futuristic stylings are created to suit the tech-savvy inhabitants we aim to attract and are designed and built by world-renowned architectural firm James Law Cybertecture. We have designed something special for the island and we call it the Satoshi Island Module. Shown here in renderings, the Satoshi Island Module is a self-sustaining building that can be positioned into many different designs to create hundreds of unique types of homes apartments, amenities, and offices. Although the Satoshi Island module is futuristic in design, it is by no means futuristic in feasibility. As we've already built similar buildings in the past, as seen here are the modules we've provided to the Hong Kong government. Satoshi Island is truly a real world use case for blockchain technology as 100% of commerce on the island will be cryptocurrency based and all assets and rights will be made possible through the ownership of NFTs. Anyone can own a piece of the island through the availability of an NFT collection made up of 2100 uniquely identified blocks of land. Each of these blocks are large enough to build a home on, and holders of multiple blocks can combine adjoining NFTs to create larger blocks, capable of accommodating expansive homes, commercial spaces, or apartment complexes. So yeah, that's essentially it in a nutshell. And you would think that uh, someone like me, who, you know, me and the wife uh, invest in the real estate properties, we'd be on this. We'd really like to get into this. But uh, for us and our personal experiences, we're going to pass on this one because I like to invest in real estate in the city that I live into and not have to have it, you know, halfway across the world. This might be better for something else, but just so you know, uh, those plots of lands are gone. The NFTs are gone and uh, there may be a sale later on, but uh, that's not what's happening here. I just found it fascinating that this is actually happening and they're making this an actual reality. So, so there is that piece to the puzzle. And then if we take a look at it, just so you know, uh, as far as like how this gets going, because to, to create an entire island is no small feat. Let's just be honest. I mean, the infrastructure, electricity, waste disposal, governance, and everything else, that's a pretty tall order to really get going. And this is their, their map of uh, the roadmap, how they see it. So the land NFT deed sales done Q2 2022. Citizenship NFT launch Q3 2022, NFT marketplace Q3. I guess you could uh, sell and buy those things over there. I will, probably won't be doing that either. Satoshi Island module manufacturing phase one. So 
uh, the ones that they talk about for James Law and the cyber architecture, those still are getting completed and haven't even been delivered. That's in Q3, which is coming up. Physical Island Development, Q3. Satoshi Island Module Availability, Q3. Manufacturing Phase 2, construction, private opening, public opening, and so on and so forth. And I will just tell you this, in my years of uh, real estate, any any kind of developer that says it's going to happen on this date, just tack on a, a lot more days or months uh, to that. But I mean, to me, it's a super ambitious project and I hope uh, it actually works out. So uh, just as a, a little bit of a backdrop, one of the things that makes me excited is not is because of the people that are involved. One of those is James Law. This is uh, one of his his sites and companies, Home D. And you can see a lot of those, those box and pods that they were talking about in the Satoshi Island. They've already done it. And they've already done that for sustainability in different cities, uh, such as Hong Kong, for uh, small urban areas, and to cut down on the housing costs and uh, availability. So I can see where it is. Also, uh, the uh, architecture firm is no slouch. Here's the uh, the tube, the Opod tube housing. This is what they're talking about, the box pod. They've also created some pretty big industries or some big buildings like uh, the pad in Dubai, 26-story uh, tall residential building. They've also uh, done close to us here in Texas, the uh, Spaceport America right there in New Mexico. And then they're a part of the uh, Hyperloop design development for the architecture of the Hyperloop coined by Elon Musk. So uh, all these things have been done and uh, they've got a pretty good architecture. Now it's just really about uh, getting the, all the infrastructure in. And for that question, I'm going to bring in uh, Dennis Troyek. He is the head of operations for all things on the ground. And uh, I just got to know how they're going to do this. This is uh, this will be interesting. So let's jump in. All right, buddy. So as promised, I tried to bring someone in who would actually make a little more sense of what's going on with this, in my personal opinion, uh, extremely ambitious project. Uh, we've got Dennis here. Dennis, he is uh, part of the infrastructure team that we just talked about. So Dennis, thanks for coming on the show and answering some of these questions, which I can't figure out. My pleasure. Yeah, perfect. So Dennis, let's just start with, with the basic of basics. Why? Why did you guys do this? Why did you bring together Satoshi Island? And what's the whole thinking behind it? Because to me, it looks like uh, a lot of work and a lot of time and commitment. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me, of course. And, and you know, the, the first, you know, the most important thing is it was important for us to be able to have uh, a place of our own. You know, the crypto industry right now is, is spread all over the world. Uh, and we don't have really have a, apart from the conferences and some of the events that are run all yep. over the world, we don't really have a place where we can come together and be able to really experience and discuss crypto 24 seven. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, there's not, there's nothing like that right now. So this is pretty interesting, but again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a very ambitious, which will lead me to my next question. Is this sustainable? Let's talk about the nuts and the bolts. Because, I mean, to get everybody there, we know that the land sale is over. It's all sold out, which is awesome. That's great. Now the next phase is to go, okay, well, what about electricity, waste, food, water, governance, natural disasters, everything that you would have to have for an island to be, to actually function and move forward. How is this going to actually happen moving forward? Well, this is actually no longer a pipe dream. We've been working on this for over four years. Uh, and of course, all those things we already thought of uh, and actually built. Uh, there are a uh, sort of traditional style villas on the island that already exist, uh, about five of them, right, uh, which right. actually already can accommodate people. Uh, and solar power, you know, waste and electricity and internet uh, all already have been created. And what's going to happen is we're going to use the same system and scale them uh, based on the requirement of the population. I got gotcha. you. So it looks like you've got it at a at probably like a lower scale. And then as people start to move in, because it's not going to happen until what, Q4, 2022, Q1, 2023? We expect, uh, we expect uh, you know, to have some people coming in at the end of this year. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, next year, maybe mid Q2, we expect at least one area of the island to be completed uh, for permanent population to be able to come in and move in. Gotcha. Okay. So that'll be, let me know my next one. What are the challenges right now? Because like the thing we just talked about, it sounds good, but the challenges actually make this an actual reality. So, I mean, if we're talking about renewables, you know, we're talking about, you know, wind and solar and yeah, we're talking about waste, waste disposal. Where does that go? Who does that? The governance that's, that themselves. And then the last question is who owns this Island? 
because I know we are in, you know, we are right outside of, of Australia, but who owns this island? Is it the people within it or is it the, is it the government itself? Right now, uh, so general, generally in Vanuatu, which is where the private island is located, the land belongs to the people. So it is a leasehold. Uh, this particular island is a 75-year leasehold. So the company owns the lease. Uh, and uh, what's going to happen is eventually down the track, once we finalize all the development and really, uh, you know, complete this foundation uh, for the people you know, for the citizen NFT holders to be able to take over in the future. Um, to us, it's a positive thing, the leasehold, because that means that we will continue to support the local people uh, and they will benefit not only from the employment opportunities that this uh, project will provide for them, but to continue to, uh, you know, benefit from their own land. Um, we've, you know, as far as the development is concerned, uh, crypto is the future, in our opinion. Blockchain is the future technology. It's very innovative. Um, and sustainability was uh, almost a no-brainer. Uh, this is why we partner up with this really cool guy called James Law. Uh, yeah. He is, uh, you know, he loves and thrives when it comes to building sustainable smart cities, and he has built a bunch of them all over the world. Uh, and when we reached out to them as a Satoshi Island team uh, in the beginning, he was stoked. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it was almost like a dream come true for him. Uh, and this actually, you know, kind of uh, solves the issue of, well, wait a minute, uh, like you said before, it is an ambitious project, of course, uh, you know, and such development might take up to 10 years. Uh, mm -hmm. But this module architecture that James Law has come up with uh, is actually going to reduce our development hugely, you know, to under three years. Uh, and also, of course, uh, like we discussed before, it is a um, sustainable, smart uh, city where every single house and home is going to be run on solar power, uh, we're utilizing this really great local uh, waste techniques uh, where waste is, gets treated by, a lot, you know, by an uh, organic bacteria and gets driven deep underground and almost becomes like a part of island's ecology. Um, you know, of course, we're looking at all the recycled waste uh, tactics and techniques and systems, um, and, you know, and going to have all the, all the right play, you know, systems in place uh, for, for the residents, for the citizens, for the visitors to come. Uh -huh. and enjoy a sustainable lifestyle. No, oh, crazy. Again, sounds uh, sounds like a, a a lot of thought went into it. Now it's all about execution. And that'll be the, the, the last question then. So we talked about the challenges and there's plenty of those come, moving forward. Thankfully, everything moves in stages and you can kind of grow as people get in there. What's the best possible outcome here for Satoshi Island? Where do you guys see yourself in you know two years, one year, two years, five years, 10 years? Apart from the fact that we're going to have this crypto utopia, this hub, this city where you can come and you know you'll be able to sit down at a cafe uh, and have an espresso and be able to talk to the individual next door about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, innovation within our space. Um, our big ambition for this is to be a, a blueprint for how future societies, cities uh, can be built utilizing the community, uh, utilizing a true uh, blockchain democracy uh, and of course a futuristic sustainability you know we all know very well that we need to look after our planet uh, and we hope you know bringing all this uh, high-tech individuals into this one place uh, you know and having this element of uh, freedom to innovate and, and design and you know uh, invent uh, yeah. we're going to really uh, have people on the islands who are you know ambitious and of themselves to create great things for the world in the future. Well, my man, I tip my I tip my hat to you and the crew to get this done because I think it is uh, it is a step in the right direction. It's just a monumental task to get it going. So what I'm going to ask you is, uh, as time goes on, because you know land's already sold out and everything else. As time moves on, just come back to the show and just give us an update about how things are going over there, and then uh, we'll talk. I think that would be great. Uh, I think it's definitely a good idea to see, you know, to see the outcome. Uh, we are we are very positive. Like I said, you know, mm. like it is an ambitious project. Like you said, it is an ambitious project. Hey, you got to shoot for the moon, right? Uh, and we're <laughs> yeah. almost there, you know, with all the hard parts as far as, you know, getting the approvals is concerned, as far as getting, you know, like it's not easy, especially in our space, to come up with something like this and everyone's going to go, yeah, let's do it. You know, there was a lot of work involved. Uh, to make sure that it is not just a pipe dream. So I'm looking forward to coming back and showing you the updates and maybe even one day bring you onto the island and doing uh, an interview there. 
Yeah, sounds like a plan. Well, I already got I already got my my tropical island in Puerto Rico. I'm 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 good there, but I think there's always a little bit different for travel. I'm sure, my wife will oh. love it. Dennis, thanks again, man, for coming on. All right, everybody, let's jump back. All right, so that's it. So I want to say thanks, to Dennis, again for for coming on and talking to us about this. This is uh this isn't a one and done uh, type of uh, video. I'd like to see where this thing goes, and it's really is like he talked about. It's it's a blueprint for the future to see this actually can actually work out you can build you you can build a location a society on blockchain technology and uh and go from there so i best of luck to him we'll see how it works anyhow if you like today's video uh, give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about in this channel are time sensitive that's it for today so thanks so much for stopping by i appreciate it i'll see you on the next one